video tutorial for how to sew the superb market bag by Amber Makes. Shop in style with this perfect bag featuring beautiful illustration. It'll hold loads of shopping too. In the greengrocers, the grocery and the bakery prints. Cutting out the fabric pieces. Start by unfolding your fabric panel and cut out all the fabric pieces. The seam allowances are included on all the pieces. So all you need to do is cut round the outer printed line Cut out the label that's printed above each of the pieces and pin it to the top edge of the fabric piece. That will just help to remind you which is which when you're making up your bag. Making the bag body. The bag is joined together at the sides and the bottom with French seams. So take the bag front and back and place them wrong sides facing. So the right sides are out, which seems the opposite way round to normal, but that's how you do a French seam. Now pin it together down the sides, making sure all the raw edges are matching. Then pin it together across the bottom, making sure the raw edges are matching. And then pin it together all the way up the other side, again, making sure the raw edges are matching. Then sew together along down the sides and across the bottom using a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Once this is done, you then will need to trim the seam allowance. If you trim it in half, that's just about right. That's about an eighth of an inch. I'm showing you here with a tape measure to show that you need to cut it to about eighth of an inch, but just cut it in half. This will make the seam allowance very narrow, so be careful you don't trim the stitches, but it means that the raw edges will be encased in the seam when you complete the French seam in the next step. So just trim that side all the way from the top to the bottom. Then trim the bottom seam in the same way and then trim the other side seam allowance in the same way. So they're all trimmed in half. Once that's done, rearrange the bag slightly, keeping it right sides out so that you can open and press the seams. The seam allowances need to be open and flat to help you to keep get that seam right on the edge in the next step. Now turn the bag so it is wrong sides out, so the right sides in the cent in the middle. Arrange the bag so that that seam that you've done, the first seam, is lying right on the edge. By pressing it open in the previous step, this makes it a lot easier to do. So just roll it with your fingers so the seam is lying right on the edge. And then give it a good press. This will make sure that the bag front and bag back are lying nice and flat together and that seam is lying right on the edge. Now to keep everything flat whilst you stitch this second seam, pin the two layers of the bag front and back together. Pin them about half an inch down from the top just to keep it flat. But it also, if you pin them further enough from the seam like this, then you won't need to remove them while you're stitching. You can remove them afterwards. Now stitch this together, again using a quarter of an inch seam allowance. So now you can see it's all stitched together. That's one French seam on the side seam of the bag. So if you have a look, on the inside, you've got a nice neat seam. Well, on the right side of the bag, there's a nice neat seam. And on the wrong side of the bag, this will be the inside. It's nicely enclosed with no, no raw edges. And repeat this to French seam, the other side seam, and the base of the bag as well. Now we need to press the seams so that they're facing in the right direction. This will help when you're boxing the corners in the next step. So keeping the bag wrong sides out, press the side seam towards the front of the bag, then rearrange it and keeping it wrong sides out again, press the other side seam so it faces the front of the bag. Now take the base seam and arrange and press it so it faces towards the bag back. This means they will nest together really nicely in the next step. Boxing the corners of the bag. Now you've finished your French seams and the bag is right sides out. So wrong sides are facing. Take the base seam 
and the side seam and place them so they're wrong sides facing. Now, because you press the seam allowances towards the front on the sides and the back on the bottom, they will nest nicely. So just give them a little wiggle and the two seams will sit side by side so they match exactly. Pop a pin in where the seams match and then pull out those side edges so they're nice and neat because you don't want any wrinkles or creases at this point. Put another pin at the other end and then making sure that the other corner is nice and flat. Pin it together. Now this French seam is made in exactly the same way as the French seams for the sides and the base of the bag. So stitch it together with a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Once that's done, you can remove those pins. Now trim the seam. Again, trim it in half in the same way as you did with the side and the base seams. So it's about eighth of inch wide. Once that's done, open up the bag so that the seam is laying flat-ish. It's not easy to get the whole thing to lie flat because of the side seams, but just get it lying as flat as you can. Now open up those seam allowances. You probably need to do this with your finger first because they're quite narrow, and then press them open. Now turn the bag so that it is right sides facing, so that you've got the wrong side showing on the out. And then roll the seams again. Because you've opened it, even if you've just done it with your fingers in the other step, they will roll to the edge. Give them a little roll between your fingers so that the seams are lying right on the edge for a neat finish. And then press. Take your pins and in the same way as you did with the side seams, pin together about half an inch away from the seams just to keep everything lying nice and flat and making sure that those seam allowances are facing in opposite directions. Sew together with a quarter of an inch seam allowance and you've completed the French seam to box the corners. You can see that it's a nice neat seam from the outside and then repeat that to box the other corner in exactly the same way. Your bag outer is now finished. You've got nice neat French seams down the sides, across the bottom and the box corners too. Making the straps for your bag. Take one bag strap and fold it in half lengthways with right sides facing. Then pin it together all the way down the length, making sure you keep those raw edges along the length matching. Pin it together all the way along. It's a long strap because it's going to be a carrying strap and a handle as well. Once it's pinned together, sew it together with a quarter of an inch seam allowance all the way from one end of the strap along the other to hold those two long edges together. Once that's sewn, rearrange the strap so that the seam is laying in the centre and press it open. The reason you do this is it will make it easier to get this seam lying right on the edge when you turn it right sides out in a bit. It's worth taking the time because it's quicker to press this open. Tack it together across the other short end using a long machine stitch and turn it right sides out. I like to use a turning tube for this because it's quicker and easier. So if you use one of these, push the tube right to the end till it gets to that tacked end and taking the blunt end of the stick that comes with the turning tube, push this end of the strap all the way through the tube until it comes out right at the other end. Once you've got it out at the end, pull it all the way through and your strap is very quickly and easily turned right sides out. Un take out the stick from the tube and undo those temporary tacking stitches you put at the other short end. Now lay your strap flat. And make sure that that seam is lying right on the edge. You can roll it between your fingers to do this. 
but to get a nice, neat finish and make sure all those little tins or packages are lying right on the edge, then you need to get the seam on the end. Once you've done that, top stitch all the way down one long end and then all the way down the other long end. This will neaten it and help the strap to lay flat. So there's one strap finished and top stitched. Make the other strap in exactly the same way until you have a pair of straps. Attaching the straps. Take one strap and place it right sides up. So one of the little mini prints is on the right hand side. Now mark and measure one inch down from the top. This is mark one. Use a raisable pen or pins. Now keeping that image on the side, measure 15 inches in from that side and mark. This is mark two. And then measure 16 inches from that side, so just one inch away from that. This is mark three. These marks will help you get your strap in exactly the right place so that it becomes a handle and a strap all in one go. Now take your bag that you've made earlier and lay it out flat so that the bag front is right sides up. But place it so the seam is just laying flat as well because you're going to measure inwards from this seam. So measure inwards across the bag front, eight inches inwards from that left-hand side seam. Measure it on the top raw edge. And then measure about two inches below this and then double check that that's still eight inches in from that left side seam. These are the positioning marks for your strap. Now turn it round so you've still got the bag right sides up and the bag front on the top and measure from the right hand seam exactly the same measurements. So measure eight inches inwards from that right side seam and make a mark and then measure two inches down again. You're going to use these marks to keep the strap straight during assembly. So it's important that they're the same distance from the side seams. You're now ready to pin your strap in place. So place the bag so that the front is right sides up. Now take your strap and where you've got mark one, place that so that the outer edge of the strap is level with those eight inch marks. And that horizontal mark one lies level with the raw edge of the top of the bag. Pin it into place at the top and then to keep it straight during assembly, pin it again just below that. Now making sure that the strap lies straight by running it through your fingers, move the bag front slightly because we're going to work on these second marks from that were measured in from the right hand side seam. Now find mark two, which was the 15 inch mark, and make that level with the raw edge of the top of the bag so that the right hand side of that strap is level with the eight inch mark on the bag front. Doing all of these measuring and marking means that your straps will be perfectly even, lying straight, and your handles and your straps will be the same length on the front of the back of the back. So it's worth taking the time to do this. Now pin it in again so the strap, strap is straight. Now fold the strap over so that mark three, that's the 16 inch mark, is at the top of the fold and fold it back down. Now pin it into place through the two layers of strap and the bag front and remove that bottom pin to make sure you don't sew over it later and then pin it into place below and this will help to keep it straight during assembly removing the pin beneath as you go don't forget otherwise you'll sew over it when you pin tack this into place later making sure the bag front and the bag back isn't pinned together Take the other end of the strap, making sure you keep it straight and line up those two raw short edges and pin it into place. Now you'll see the short, raw short edges, both the raw ones and the folded ones, stick beyond the top of the bag. This is to add extra strength so that the strap doesn't come out when you're using the bag. So now you've got the short loop, that's going to be the carrying handle, and you've got the long loop and this is going to be the shoulder strap. 
and you've now pinned your handle. So tack it into place across the top and then tack it into place that two inches below it to hold it straight. So this is what it looks like when it's all sewn into place. These are just tacking stitches so you can do these as long stitches on your machine. When you've done that, mark, pin, measure, tack the other strap to the bag back in exactly the same way. Attaching the elastic. Take the length of elastic that you've cut for your bag and lay the bag so it, the bag back is facing, right sides facing up. Now measure halfway between the handles that you stick, tacked on earlier. It's about three inches. Take your piece of elastic and fold it in half so the two short ends, ends meet. Now place these so they extend half an inch above the top of the bag. This just gives it a little bit of extra strength so the elastic won't pull out when you've used it. Now pin it into place at this centre point. Just pin it through the fabric, through the centre of the elastic. As long as you use a narrow elastic, that's fine. And then pin it into place a little bit further down. This will help to keep the elastic straight during assembly. Then tack it into place across the top and then a little bit further down. Attaching the facing. Take the front facing and the back facing and place them right sides facing, making sure those mini prints stay the same way up. Now pin them together at one short end and so you'll sew together down that end and then pin them together at the other short end, ready to sew together. Sew the short ends using a half inch seam allowance at either end. Once you've done that, press the seams open and flat at either end. There'll be no French seams used here because these seams will be encased later when you finish the facing. Now take the join together bag front and back and place the facing, right sides facing, with the bag bag front and back, making sure that the top edge of the facing is at the top edge of the bag. You can just have a look at those little prints and you'll see which is the top edge. This makes sure that when you turn it over, everything is facing the right way up. Now, Keeping the facing nice and straight, pin it right sides together, matching the other side seam of the facing to the side seam of the bag. Now, put the, in order to pin the facing all the way around the top, you'll have to put the bag inside the facing. Keeping it right sides together, pin it together all the way around the top edge. You'll see that the raw ends and the looped ends of the bag straps and handles are poking out above the facing. This is because they will be encased in the seam later to make them stronger. When you get to pinning together the bag back, make sure you pop all of the ends of the handles and straps inside so that they don't get caught in the seam. Pin together across the handles. You'll see the elastic ends are poking out above the raw edges of the bag front and back and the facing. Again, this gives it extra strength. By having that extra allowance, it won't get pulled out so easily. Now sew it together all the way around the top using an a half inch seam allowance. Once this is done, open it out. Then open out those two seams from the bag front and back and the facing and press them open. This will give you a neater finish when you fold the facing to the inside of the bag. Rearrange the bag as you're going so that you can press the facing all the way along. Now we're going to turn under the other raw edge of the facing. So you need to turn this under by half an inch to the wrong side. 
So measure it, pin it and press it so that you've turned the whole raw long edge under by half an inch. Once that's done, keeping the bag wrong sides up, fold the facing over to the wrong side. When you reach the ends of the handles that are sticking up, tuck them underneath that turned end of ed under edge of the facing and pin it into place. This keeps the ends of those handles and the elastic nice and securely in place and gives them extra strength because they're tacked under the facing and you're enclosing all the raw edges as you go. The facing has the mini prints printed on it just to give the inside of your bag a special finishing touch. So pin it into place all the way around making sure that the side seams of the facings and the side seams of the bag front and back are matching up. Again when you reach the bag back tuck the ends of the handles underneath that turned under end I pinned it together at the side seams, then at the turned under handles, and then I pinned it together in between. Now you'll need to undo the tacking stitches that you worked earlier to hold the the one the tacking stitches that you worked just two inches down to hold the straps and the elastic straight during assembly. You need to undo these at this stage, otherwise your straps and your handles and your elastic will be facing in the wrong direction when you stitch the facing into place. But because you worked a longer machine stitch to do this, just use a seam ripper or a small pair of scissors to quickly untack them. And don't forget to undo the tacking stitches that you would attach to the elastic as well to keep it straight. Remove all the extra stitches, then make sure that the handles and the elastic are facing upwards away from the top of the bag. And that all the facing is pinned in nice and flat. Now stitch it all the way around that bottom folded under edge. Then you're going to stitch all the way around the top edge. So here you can see I've stitched the facing into place around the bottom edge, just top stitch, so just about an eighth of an inch, sixteenth of an inch from the edge, all the way around the top and the bottom. The elastic and the handles are all facing upwards. Give it a nice press to neaten it. Finishing off the bag. Lay the bag back right sides up and mark and measure two inches down from where, just below where you've sewn the elastic loop on. This will be in the centre of the bag. Mark that with a pen, making sure it's two inches below and lying in a straight line with the elastic. Now take a button. It can be a button that matches the colour of your bag. Make sure it's a reasonable size. Mine is about an inch, just so that the elastic will loop over it. Now if you thread, do a double length of thread, thread the two ends of the thread in your needle, you'll have a loop at the other end. Once you've attached the thread, thread it through the loop and you'll get a neat finish without any extra ends. Now sew the button in this position, making sure you only stitch through the bag back, not through the bag front as well. Work quite a few stitches because this needs to be nice and secure. This is the button that you're going to use for... Um, rolling up the bag and securing it later. Once that's done and it's nice and secure, turn the bag over to the bag front and sew another button on in exactly the same position, two inches down from the top and level with where the elastic would come. This button is used to secure your shopping once it's full. It just holds the top of the bag front. How to fold the bag. To store your bag neatly away, lay the bag so that it is right sides up. The loop of elastic needs to go at the back and make sure it's all flat. Now you can do this really neatly by folding all the edges, but just make sure it's flat. Now take the handles and the carrying straps and just lay them so they lay flat on the bag. Take one side of the bag and fold it over so that the handles are on the edge and the other side of the bag so that the handles are on the edge. This doesn't have to be perfect, just try and get it folded inwards. Now roll it all the way up from the bottom and take the loop of elastic and wrap it round the button. 
Now your bag is ready to be stored away so it's ready to use for next time you go shopping. <laughs>